Uh, good evening. This is the February 21st, 2023 meeting of the Fairfield Harbor Management Commission. Uh, I'm Kim Taylor in the um, Sullivan Independence Hall with Commissioner uh, Jack Hersler, uh, alternate uh, Dave Henry. Uh, on the phone, we have uh, Sam Cargill and Don Hyman. Also, pre so we have a quorum for this evening's meeting. Also present are Jeff Stedman, our consultant, Harbor Master LeClaire, uh, Betty Gabriel, and uh, members of the public. So let's call this meeting to order and by pledging allegiance to the flag. So this evening we have with us our new alternate commissioner, Dave Henry. Um, Dave, unfortunately, I can't introduce you to a whole bunch of people because it's yeah, okay. not a lot of not a lot of faces. Harbor Master LeClaire, consultant Jeff Stedman, Betty Gabriel, our recording secretary, Jack Herschler, the vice chair, um, Jeff Engborg, the mooring contractor for the Harbor Commission in the town of Fairfield, uh, and um, welcome. And yourself. I'm Kim Taylor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I'm happy to be here. Um, I shared some of this with the. Um, uh, RTM or the um, uh, um, First Lackman uh, Commission, but um, I'm a lifelong Fairfielder. I'm happy to be here uh, in this capacity. Um, uh, my great or my grandfather, rather, uh, once served as town clerk. He actually has a uh, tree on the uh, corner of the property planted for him uh, in his honor. So uh, again, I uh, I'm happy to be here, uh, serving the town that I uh, you know know and love. Uh, my current role is as the director of the Bridgeport Regional Aquaculture Science Technology Education Center, more locally known as Aqua. Uh, and so uh, we've got some uh, permanent clamming grounds here in Fairfield. Um, but it, um, yeah, it's a, a, you know, near and dear to my heart. Make sure that the waterways are uh, well looked after. So I'm uh, again happy to be here, and uh, I've got lots to learn. So happy to do that as well. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Any questions for our new alternate? Okay. Uh, first order of business then is to uh, approve the minutes from December 2022. Uh, do I have a motion? Move. Jack is moved. Commissioner, I, somebody on the phone. I need a second. A second. Thanks, Mr. Sam. Park. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, they're approved. Uh, next uh, order of business would be to approve the January minutes. Uh, can I have a motion? So move. Jack moves. Someone on the phone. I was absent in January, so I can't approve it. Sam? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So January minutes approved, too. Excellent. So uh, moving right along, um, there was a lot, of, lot going on this month. Uh, and let's go through the uh, my report. Um, On January 18th, uh, I responded to Colin Clark. Uh, uh, DEEP had sent us their tentative determination uh, of approval for the structures at 1143 Sasco Hill Road. Uh, we had, just, we had uh, the commission had chatted about the tentative approval in our January meeting, and we had three main points to make to Mr. Clark. Uh, the first was that we wanted uh, uh, to protect free and unobstructed public access along the shoreline between Sasco and Pine Creek beaches, that we agreed with the Harbor Master's letter in which he um, uh, suggested to DEEP that the term motorized that they used in their tentative approval be expanded and changed to that used by the Coast Guard, 
And our third concern was that um, additional water access structures could negatively impact the access along the shoreline between Sasco and South Pine Creek beaches. And we ask that DEEP and the Commission have an opportunity to review the land record notices that DEEP is go was going to require uh, the owners of that property um, to include in the deeds um, prohibiting um, additional shoreline, shoreline structures. We wanted to take a, take have an opportunity to review the language in those notices. Um, Mr. Clark respond almost immediately uh, and very positively. Um, he said that he was he believed that the pier at 1143 Sasco Hill Road would be built high enough so that the public would be able to continue to access the shoreline easily between Sasco Beach and South Pine Creek Beach. Um, Deep's legal staff was confident that the condition of the approval limiting the development at Sasco Hill Road to one pier would prevent future and current owners from building any additional piers and that as a matter of practice, DEEP drafts the land record filing form and, and of, that gets filed so that we would, they would be, have an opportunity to, um, the language would be the, the kind of language that they thought would be necessary to prevent any additional uh, peers along that property. Um, on January 25th, uh, we received an email from John Pinto who is president of the Connecticut Harbor Management Association, and he forwarded materials related to the association's effort to promote legislation that would clarify uh, established and recognized harbor management practice, practices that appear to have been diminished by the Cohen decisions. Um, on February 2nd, uh, we received an email from uh, Jill Vergara, who represents District 7 of the RTM, she asked that the HMC consider expanding its jurisdiction to include Ash Creek, but not to include the Fairfield Shoreline or South Benson Marina. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, under new business. Um, on uh, the 3rd of February, uh, I sent the transmittal form to raise in connection with the COP application that the commissioners and I believe the harbor master and Jeff should have received from me when it was filed uh, uh, two weeks on the 13th, I believe. Um, a member of the Ash Creek Association, Jennifer Groves, emailed on February 4th asking us to please consider uh, expanding our jurisdiction. Uh, they are seeking uh, collaboration uh, with other appropriate agencies for uh, oversight and protection of Ash Creek. And on February 6th, we emailed our uh, Hartford contingent, Senator Huang and Representatives McCarthy Vehi, Leeper and Kite, asking for their support uh, to advance the bill um, that would clarify uh, the Cohen decisions, and uh, we included lots of background materials. M much of what we sent to our representatives was included in the package that we had received from uh, John Pinto. And then finally, um, on February 6th, we got an email from DEEP with the approval of the application for the pier at 1143 Sasco Hill Road. I know that's a mouthful. Are there any questions? Okay, no questions then. One question. Yes, Don. Uh, the state representatives that received the uh, background material about the proposed uh, legislation change, was yep. there any response from those lawmakers? Uh, Jennifer Leeper responded that she would read the materials. Okay. That, 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 no other response. Yeah, that's the only response. Um, Jeff will talk um, more about what's happening, um, what's happening uh, under uh, with that um, legislation uh, under old business, and there, 
I mean, as he'll present it, it's clear that there's an awful lot going on and it's happening very fast. So um, we still have time to get in touch with them and they have time to get in touch with us. So um, more, to, more to come. Thank okay. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Any other questions? Harbor Master LeClaire. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Lots to report, lots going on. For <coughs> normally would be a slow uh, time of year voting-wise, but uh, to begin with the renewals, I, I changed the messaging that goes out from online mooring because it actually wasn't correct, which is always what is always used. Now, vessel uh, owners rather uh, uh, everything expires December 31st. Applications must be complete by January 31st. And you may have a grace period if the harbor master grants it until February 28th by affirmative action by the harbor master. In the past, the messaging wasn't as clear. It made it look basically like you had until the end of February and then talked to the harbor master. So I tightened up the emails and I, I sent some personal emails out uh, from the town account rather than just online mooring to chase down the folks. And uh, we have much more progress this year than in the past. Right now, there's only a few uh, uh, waiting list people that need to, to pay their ten dollars. That, that's easy enough to catch up with. I reached out to them, telling them if you don't pay, you're off the list. It's that simple. And if you don't want to be on the list anymore, that's fine. Let me know. One I know is is off because he has a uh, North Anchorage mooring and is just not interested in being on the list. Uh, as to the renewals, we have six calls under review. Of those six. Uh, three have done everything except provided registration. I have a, uh, uh, they're working on getting them. They didn't listen to me. They left them on their boats and don't have copies, and they <laughs> will have them in a few more weeks. One is a documented vessel, which I've indicated needs to have, um, obviously, a state registration as well. Documentation is not enough to stay in the harbor. You have to register it in Connecticut. Uh, so three just need registrations. One needs registration and insurance, and that's our friend. I, I won't tell you the doctor's last name, but we, you've had this every year with him, trying to get to the paperwork in time. One only needs the insurance, which I expect uh, he tried to send me today, but can't get the attachment to clip on, so we're working with that. And one has done everything except send the payment, and he's given me his registration, renewal, and insurance. So we'll be able to fix them up quickly. They've all been in communication with me back and forth, phone calls and emails to get it done. Four are what I call uh, incomplete. Of those four that are incomplete, one is indicated he is not renewing. That is West Wall 9. That's one in, in front of, you know, where my personal boat is, as you know. That's been a uh, small sailboat. So we'll have one spot opening up from him. Uh, we have uh, one, uh, uh, Dr. Christie, who has replaced his boat with a new boat of the same size. Uh, so he can't send in uh, the registration or insurance, but he found one in Delaware and was going down this coming weekend to get the boat. It's a 21-foot whaler uh, uh, replacing a boat of similar size, so that's fine. Uh, and he's having trouble getting the system to take his payment without a registration and insurance. We're working on why it won't take that yeah. payment. They should be able to make the payment without that, so we're working on that issue. Uh, uh, Miss, uh, we have one which is dropping every, who's dropping everything off at my house uh, today, uh, and we have one who has been no communication, and he was the last minute communication last year. But in digging, he's on the Perry Green, and it looks like last year he paid not only us but the town of Fairfield for a Perry Green mooring for the same boat. So I don't think he knows, understands the difference. So I'm going to speak with him because if he has the town one, he can keep the town one, and that will free up one more Perry Green for me to give to a small powerboat, which will work out well. I don't think he realizes that. And then looking at what the town sent me later at the end of last summer, he made a payment twice. So for two different spots for the same boat. And only wow. has one boat. That's why you have empty. That's why it was if empty. They have trouble filling it on the town list, but we won't have trouble. I can get some small boats in there. So I'm going to be talking to uh, Mr. Sabia. I will be talking to him about what he's got there. Uh, so he applied. I'm just trying to figure out how to say. He had to have applied for Perry Green mooring on the town mooring, apparently, and, and, and then on separately worked with and just paid okay. both. I don't know how many years he's been doing this. 
Okay. And he's sitting on the harbor master mooring uh, wall spot. There's a boat for the harbor master boat on the wall spot. Correct. If the harbor master ever wanted to put the boat there, I don't. I leave it at the yacht yard because right. I've just converted my little private whaler to that. And it's, it's, I'd rather have it there. It's faster to get it out. You know, some of the water's there anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And that's the spot I've offered that harbor master spot too deep if they want to station a boat out this side of the town since we have a spot. And I've offered that to them for use of us and them both, and uh, they haven't taken me up on it yet. So we're making progress. So things are looking good, and, and we're going to have so we're going to have at least uh, one opening that I know of. Uh, we're going to have to move two of the boats around, as you know, because one gentleman got a bigger boat, which already is registered and paid for. So we're doing well, uh, and uh, we'll see what else we come. Because I know Pequot, I believe, still has a few spots at their dock. We have to see who they put at the dock, where those vessels come from. If they come off of town mooring, the people will have to you know, pick one or the other if they're offered it. And we may have some more room for a larger sailboat. Great. So that would be good. Uh, Great. Yep, so that's working well. So that's the first part of the, what else has happened? So um, uh, as other renewals, we received payment from uh, Pequot for the North Anchorage and the floating dock. So I'll be formally approving all of them. Um, so everything is offset that payment. And, That's crazy. Uh, the, the uh, as you know, the uh, fire boat sank two weekends ago, and uh, we were notified of that. I got a number of calls, so I went down there and reported it to deep as I have to do as harbor master, so they would know that. Uh, uh, mooring inspection. Ryan, I, yeah. Do they know the cause of the? Uh, I went. I was told that they don't. Which that was during the very cold spell, wasn't it? It was the it was the evening into the early morning of that single digit day. They had been on the boat the day before, apparently, the firefighters. Uh, I talked to C. Cho before he pulled it. He had a couple of ideas that I was told after. Uh, I've got nothing official from the fire department or the police as to what it was, what the cause was. Um, and, but I know the surveillance cameras uh, apparently show no. You know, no one going down to the boat and got hurt from last night. It was very cold weather. Or something to do it with. could have been lined how it was secured to the dock. It could have been a through flapper valve. It could have been a through hole with the water freezing the pipe. A number of different things. And there were strong been. winds that night too. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, so I, as you know from last time, I did the mooring inspection so with the, uh, our contractor Travis specifically at the club and. Everything looks well for what's out and what they're, you know, what's going to be replaced. We did, uh, you did vote the last week to authorize Pequot to jump on their bid to have a bunch of new mooring uh, balls ordered for the Helix area of the new style, which keeps the lines out of the or uh, out of the water and has rooms for a pickup pole. Should they want it right on top, there's a recess. They're very nice. And that'll let us uh, reutilize some of those to other parts in the harbor where we have some that are waterlogged. You can see the line on them. They're sinking by themselves, which they shouldn't. Uh, they were ordering the wraps for us, so we have new wraps for the two speed buoys, and those are going to be critically important, keeping both because they position you coming in the channel. And you know, Jack has been out there and Jeff with me several times now this winter, uh, checking depths, which I'll get to in a second of the channel. That's going to be critically important that those get put in the right spot again, and that boats are warned to stay between them. Hug close to the fishing pier. Don't hug the country club because you're going to run out of water quickly as you come in. And at low tide, you know, I went down there again Saturday afternoon, which was an unusually low tide. And anecdotally, when I walked out to the end of the jetty, you could have walked in the water on the country club side, the Sasco side, all the way to the end and not come above the calves in the water. It was that shallow. I've never seen it quite that shallow. So I think sand has come in. Maybe that's where the missing sand has come from. Kenzie came in on that side of it, but you can literally walk all the way out. But on the other side, you can walk halfway out, very, very low on the channel side. Uh, so that's interesting. You know, we went out there again Saturday because uh, Eric and Sam were out there with the risk managers last week from the town and uh, the risk manager and an insurance rep looking at lower wharf. And they said something didn't look right with the water. Well, they're correct. Some, there, are, there were waves even yesterday when I was there. 
at uh, in the afternoon, a little bit, a couple of hours before low tide, there was maybe eight knots of wind. It was a beautiful sailing day, no boats out. 60 degrees, eight knots of wind from the south coming in. And there were waves rolling on in up until the fishing pier. And then it was flat after that. So something funky is going on. I think between the bottoms, the current, and the tides, we're getting not as bad as South Benson with the, that rip. But something is happening. And when we went out on the boat, we went out Saturday. Uh, Jeff, Jack, uh, George, I uh, mentioned from the club, their club's kind enough to let us take a uh, to give us a boat and a driver for an hour or so to look at this. And nothing has changed since December, January when we were out there. The pole coming in towards the wall, all of a sudden you have a deep spot that quickly pops up to much shallower. And at low tide, it's going to be tight getting two boats in there. Be very careful coming in, and one of them is going to have to hug the fishing pier. You can't, you know, get where you think the center is because it's not wide enough anymore. So it's going to be tricky, I think, on, on vessels that don't have motors like the Ideals, Goose Gander and the Pequot boats coming out, not to mention the kids' boats if they sail because there's not a lot of room to tack there, especially if another boat's coming in, a, a power boat. And the boats are usually very good about that, the sailboat. You know, they know there's kids and folks without engines just to throttle back and, and let them come out and, you know, we throw them throw a line every now and then if the winds are just totally wrong yeah. to get out, but at low time it's going to be you know, more of a sailish challenge. Uh, we used the new depth sounder, which I did get since the last meeting. It cost, I think, $201 or something. It is portable, which is nice. It'll clip on a bracket and an arm goes over the side of, of uh, the boat. We had it doing the same thing at the club's boat, hanging over the side. You can also just toss it in the water with a float and read it on your hand. Oh, cool. Very and, cool. Uh, it's a big display. It's battery operated, so you don't have to hardwire it. So no matter what, we need to go out on it. If we wanted to stand from shore, we could throw the thing out on a float and look at the depth where it lands in the water. Very Modern cool. technology, yes. Very cool. Very, it's perfect. I don't care about the fish finding because that's a minor feature of it. It is the depth yeah. and water temperature, which were, which is 40 degrees, by the way, Saturday. 40? Warming up. It's getting nice. Balmy. <laughs> That we, we did that to confirm no new shoaling, but uh, and we we did it the old-fashioned way with the weighted line as we've done in the past. Um, I followed up by uh, Jeff, as you know, Stedman sent an email to the Army Corps, so I followed up with mine, like, how are we doing with the permits? And that's one thing to tell you, let's keep them moving. And they responded with an email that they expected the permits by the end of the summer. And then they have to discuss, which you could talk more about, where to put the dirt. You saw the email that came back from the court recently yeah. today. Well, I think I think we know where. Well, I, yeah. So I'm going to yeah. keep pushing them on that because I'm going to be. I want to make sure this gets done and we don't lose another entire season again. Uh, I've. Uh, I'm going to be ordering the signs for the lower wharf, a, a new no swimming sign, a keep off sign for the fishing pier, and having the town board up the entrance to the fishing pier, put a couple of pieces across so there's no temptation to bring a piece of wood from home, a two-by-six plank and go out there. Did, did the risk manager talk about the, someone's idea of putting a fence around the lower wharf and also along Ferry Green? No, I didn't hear that from... Uh, Someone brought that up. Anyway. And, and we should hear that. Sam, Sam and yeah. Eric will hopefully tell us what they yeah, because later the, on. That was brought up by the, by the town engineer who said that in the course of working on the Perry Green bulkhead, someone had brought up the, the idea of putting a fence. Of course, that changes the character. And if that was to be required for Perry Green, why would they not have to require it for the lower wharf? But we'll find out. Right, right. Uh, I did speak to Justin from the town. As you know, there's surveillance cameras at South Benson. Uh, we chatted about getting them in, perhaps, at uh, Yee Yacht Yard. I thought that would be helpful for us and anyone else, both our, our vendor and the, and the uh, yacht club, which has security 24 hours in the summer, as well as the commission, just to keep an eye on activity. Uh, Justin liked that idea to keep an eye as to the parking lot, the launching, and more important, what boats come in and out. Unfortunately, it's, they were expensive when they put them at South Benson. They, they were about six to 8000 each to put in. When he put in his cameras, he had to use a new server, and the server is in the police department building. Uh, there, so they're running power off of that. He was not allowed to put them on telephone poles, and we have a beautiful pole just sitting right there, forth, yeah. right next to. That. We actually have two of them, <coughs> a little close, as you know, to the dinghy, the uh, yacht yard. 
doesn't mean we can't have one and, and can't maybe put one on the flagpole. And I was looking uh, uh, over the weekend uh, at the uh, the old uh, building, the fishing, I don't know what to even call the building, what's the correct name, is the building there. And there is a, a, a mast on the roof already. That's the BHF antenna for the radio that's inside. That may be maybe able to get a little height going up, something like that, off the side of it to put a camera there, too, to, to keep an eye on it. So we're going to look a little further. We need a line to come in there. I don't know whether it's a T1 line. I'm going to examine further in the building. I know there's electricity in there. I don't know what we have for cabling and that, you know, what to do we can chop off of uh, to try to get more, to get that as well. Uh, and maybe the town would want that for their security check. Maybe they'll cut it themselves. Perhaps, and then we can just jump on that and use it. So we'll keep looking at that. So do we think six to eight thousand dollars is still a cost for one of those cameras? I don't. That seems high, and that factors in a server and installation. I think we have to look around a little bit. Okay. You said you can't just take a ring camera. It can't be Chinese made. For security, it has to be American made. And you said the image quality is not that good as the other thing on uh, their cameras. It's not like what you may think that you can just zoom in like on TV and see the hall number on a boat if I want to know whose boat is that coming in that speed or that time of day. It's not that clear for what we want. So I'm going to look further. This is a, it's going to take more research. It's not that easy, apparently. So we're working on that. The other thing uh, 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 I wanted to announce is we're going to be having coffee with the harbor master, something new. I'm going to be doing it on a monthly basis starting next month. I'm going to open up that little building. I have access to it now. Uh, uh, so people could stop by and pick up their mooring stickers. Oh, and, great idea. And I thought that perhaps we'll let you commissioners know if any of you want to be there and just say hi to people. And it's a great way to do some outreach, to chat about safety. I'm going to have some handouts about everything from this is the rules of the road, remind you guys, the ladies who don't know, remind you about the narrowing channel, talking about the dredging, just to get the community involved, anyone who wants to come by and talk. I think it'd be a good way to meet the folks and save me the mailing process and the cost and just buy a pot of coffee. And Do you have a date for that? I don't yet. Okay. I just thought of this yesterday as one of my uh, okay. things that I was thinking about how to, you know, do things a little different. And I said, why not just do this once a month? We're going to have one as we get closer to the spring as well. I talked to the Coast Guard. I'm going to have a flare day where people can come and have a chance to shoot off their flare guns. And, you know, we all have old flares we haven't converted over to electronic like I did last year. We still have the battery. We never throw things out, as you know, sailors. We probably have 20 years' worth of cartridges we shouldn't be using because they may not work. And most people have never shot a flare gun or opened up a handheld, so it's a good idea to come down, get rid of your old flares at the same time, see what it's like to shoot an aerial, see how high it really goes, see what a handheld is like. So that's going to be a good learning experience and a disposal experience as well. So we're going to coordinate with the uh, the auxiliary, the, the full-time Coast Guard, the fire department, set up a chance Great. to do that at the harbor as well for folks. And for all voters, I'll invite Justin. I'll coordinate with Justin. We'll get the South Benson folks to come if they want and, and have a, a flare day uh, down there, perhaps from the lower uh, You should bring the electric one to show the new The electric one, the new one. Just to show people. Yeah, the, uh, you've seen them. There. I have one on my boat. They're handheld with an LED top. Simple twist to engage it, and you now, and it floats more importantly with a wrist strap. So if you go in the water, if you're going overboard, uh, with, with the boat's going down, you now have a way to have that with you. Wow! The kids come with a flag so that meets the yeah. Cool. Yeah. So. And it's, it's much safer, faster because I can leave it right on the shelf. Yeah, it was with cool. big orange things hidden somewhere in a bilge. It's just, uh, something you can. Uh, Very cool. Yeah, modern technology. Uh, also, the last is I was contacted by Mr. Santa from Race uh, in light of follow is a few days ago following the DEEP permit that was issued. And as you know, this is the I call it the Kenzie Point Sasco Road uh, permit for the new development. And uh, Deep had a draft permit, as the commission is familiar with, that had no motor vessels allowed. It, it talked about the seven-foot height, which was important to us. We did the walk a year a year ago to make sure people have access around, even at, at times of uh, low tide and high tide. And my comment was simply, uh, Deep should not use the colloquial motor vessels, restricting motor vessels. Let's use what the Coast Guard has for language and, and more specific language 
So, we, you know, let's use the right word. So I, I suggested use the Coast Guard reference, including auxiliary power. <laughs> so we know what we're talking about at this. So it's clear what kind of vessels can be there. Uh, Deep agreed uh, with that. And then the commission I know chimed in as well regarding using the right words if you're going to use, uh, don't use just a colloquial no power boats. Uh, Mr. Santa had requested that perhaps we consider uh, allowing tie-ups at times of high tide, just none overnight, no long-term, perhaps tying up of motorized uh, vessels, auxiliary-powered sail vessels, or uh, powered vessels, uh, three hours on either time of mean high water, uh, things like that. Uh, yeah, I think that's something you should talk about as a commission, whether that is. But when that permit came out as a draft permit, mm -hmm. would not race have had an opportunity then to comment on it to Deep before it was issued? I believe they would. What, what, would, what did Deep say? Do you have, Kim, do you have the prior permit? I don't. I don't. But I have from the, 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 the letter from, um, uh, actually, Betty. But, but the permit Issued has the Betty might have it. Yeah, the and we COP, oh no, that's a COP application. I think we both made the same recommendation. It was a small suite yeah. of, for motor vessels. I know I used the word auxiliary power sailing vessels, which is the correct terminology. And Mr. Clark, in his letter to me the day after mm -hmm. he received our comments, included, he said, we have also modified the language per the Harbor Master's recommendation. Right. So they. I, I actually did not check to see when the when the actual approval was issued on. I, I believe I looked at it and it had the same language. It did. Yeah. It, yeah. it was yeah. one of the conditions. Yeah. Right. It's condition five. Yeah. Right. On February 6th. So this letter from Mr. Clark was on uh, was on January 19th. So over the 19th, they had agreed with your recommendation that about the definition of motorized vessels. Yeah, we can't, it was restricted. Deep had in their yeah. proposal, no motorized mm -hmm. vessels. And I said, you got to be a little more, you use the right words. So my, right. my thought was if, when that went out as a tentative mm -hmm. approval, wouldn't the applicant have had a chance then to express their concern to Deep, but Deep didn't? I don't know whether they did or didn't. I didn't see anything. So now they're asking the Harbor, the Harbor Commission to... Right. Well, and that's something you talked about. You should talk about again because that is in a very it's a shellfish yes. sensitive area, if I will. Yes. There's not a lot of water there. Very little. Water. If you go at low tide, you know how little water is in that area, uh, and uh, yeah, it would be hard to get a motorized. But I don't think they included that in their original proposal or application, right? So, so the conditions are what what was the, what the applicant applied for. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the applicant didn't apply for. We the we we added. Like clarification about the kinds of vessels that right. were not were prohibited. They, they just used this generic they just non said motorized. term, right? And the harbor master pulled the U.S. Coast Guard definition, which include, included the term motorized sailboat, auxiliary, auxiliary yeah. motorized sailboat, something something right. to that effect. Exactly. And then we said that we supported that. And then on January. 19th, Mr. Clark said yes, they had included the expanded definition. So, so there would have to be an amendment to the permit that was issued, I would assume. Yeah, I would they, assume. They, and then they would, have, they would have to apply for that amendment and it would have to come back before the commission. Okay, here's what I have the language, yeah. I can say what it was said. You I, may. Attorney for the yeah. I just sent a letter in January to Mr. Clark at Land and Water Resources. I indicate I'm writing in connection with the notice of tentative determination. The submitted drawings indicate at page 18 of 21, an elevation of the proposed structure of seven foot one inch between the ground and the base of the deck measured at the end of the existing rip wrap revetment. During a meeting on site with the applicant and its professional team, as well as the Harbor Management Commission, the importance of maintaining pedestrian access from Sasco Hill Beach to South Pine Creek Beach was stressed. These are two public beaches between which the public walks in this area. Proposed elevation would appear to allow such access at all but mean high tide given the current shoreline configuration. Uh, it should be main, remain clear in any permit that the area below mean high water remain free. It looks like their proposed plan did that. They they agreed with us and they put it right. high enough up. And I just right. want to make it clear that you can't be putting sides. 
below, down to the water, no fencing, let people go under it, because, as you know, so many people do that. And that's good, and they did that, so that's good. Also, term and condition number five states as follows, birthing restriction, this is a quote, birthing restriction, at no time shall any motorized vessel be birthed at, moored at, or otherwise secured to the float authorized herein, close quote. So they refer to motorized vessels. And I said, by way of clarification and to be consistent with common U.S. Coast Guard language, I suggest this restriction be to any motorized vessel, sail vessel, vessel or auxiliary powered sailing vessel. Right. Uh, thank you for your consideration to make it clear. Right. And I think they, you then Which we, made the same we, recommendation. We made the same recommendation on January 18 and on January 19. Mr. Clark told me that they had modified the language in the special condition number five to comply with, as per your Harbor Master's recommendation. So that definition so there is was, the one. To answer Mr. Stegman, there was a restriction in the original to, regarding motorized vessels. Right. And, and we just kind of... Right, right. Uh, that's what I did. So that, that, that uh, I think, is the entire report. I'm sure you have any questions, but I believe that's everything. So without, let's not go into the lower wharf just yet, but any questions about the Harbor Master's report? By anybody? Um, excellent report, Harbor Master. Um, uh, uh, Madam Chairwoman, I have a, a, a point of parliamentary order. I hope uh, uh, that uh, Mr. Sudman and Mr. Cardio can make their report um, earlier um, than currently scheduled because of conflicts that we have both later in um, this evening. If you want to Sud Sudman's presentation to be moved up the agenda. Yeah. Oh, okay. We can do that. Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can do that. How much, okay. what, what kind of time do you need? What, what's your... We, we, don't, we don't need too much time. I just wanted to make sure that uh, Commissioner Sudman made the call. Um, I'm here. He is, uh, you are. Yeah, okay. Hello. Okay. Um, if, if you don't mind, because uh, we, I have to be somewhere at six and I know Eric has uh, child care issues. Okay, so let's just get the let's get the questions to the harbor master taken care of. We have, we have an application. We can move you. We can move you to number one under the old business. Great, Thank you, Madam Chair. But let's just Thank take. You. Let's just finish up with where we are now. Sure, okay. absolutely. Sorry. No, that's okay. okay. Is there are there any questions for the harbor master about his report? The meetings, or the discussions with the harbor master at the yacht yard. Yeah, I think that will be on a Saturday yes. afternoon. Okay. Uh, maybe morning. I don't know. I didn't really. I'll start to see. I think that would be a, that would be a really interesting, uh, or a good thing to do. Yeah. We could document it with photographs. You know, is it put put on our on the your website. life? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not get the repository. And I hope Don Hyman is listening. I am. It's hard to hear though. Well, Jeff, speak up. Jeff, Jeff asked the harbor master if the um, the um, coffees with the harbor master would be on Saturdays and in the morning. Yeah, sounds and, good to me. I, I love the idea. We can we can certainly publicize that if, if people want to. Good. Did you ask something else you wanted to add? No. No. no? Okay. Any other questions for the harbor master about his report? Okay. Uh, moving right along, commissioners, you all should have received the COP uh, that we filed with, uh, that was filed with um, race, I believe on the 13th of January, for work at the Lower Wharf. Um, this is something we've been talking about for a very long time. Are there any questions? Comments, Jeff? I don't want to go before any of the other committees. It was my understanding that we we are going to apply for permission to restore the entire pier structure, including the north and the south piers, and that we may make a decision later on, uh, depending on how much money is available, whether to repair the north pier or not. And my, my only thought is that when we read this, they, that the plan drawing 
talks about the existing 50 foot by six and a half L head to be reconstructed within the footprint of the along with the four by 14 and a half foot access way. And then it says simply the northern 40% of pier to be retained. And I'm assuming that means because they're not going to remove, they're not going to replace the pilings so that retain means to restore, restore it. But in the description, when they talk about timber wharf replacement, they, they talk only about the, the, uh, the south pier and, and replacing the timber pilings and, and maybe drilling them. And I, I'm wondering if, if we might want to just make it more clear that we're also talking about getting permission to, maybe maybe we don't need additional permission, but make, make clear that we're, we're, we want approval to fix that north pier as well. Uh, that was that was my only thought about re reading this. But it's on page. It's on page. Well, I thought I saw a picture of the pilings of the the pier to the north as yes, part that, of this. That, that, that's on right. The and so it was. Drawing. It was a little confusing. Yeah. And um, and then if you look at the attachment. And that's my there. fault. I probably should have caught that when I looked at the draft. At the end of the attachment on page two of three, or the attachment is at the end of the application where they have timber wharf replacement. They're only talking about that south. All right, well we can. But I, I don't know how to handle that. I mean, we can make a, make a comment, but I think we would also though want to make a, a comment to deep about how this is consistent with the harbor management plan and it, you know, the, the importance of it. Uh, the, the North Wharf is consistent. But the, but the whole project. The whole project, right. You know, just a, a letter of, because of, uh, deep, huh, although the commission is the applicant. Right. We, we need to review it for consistency with the plan. Uh, I think it would be worth sending a, a comment to, to the. Can you clarify a proposed a application in a comment letter? With respect to clarifying, well, something different. I might ask Race about that, but I think in, just in terms of supporting, no question. Even, I, though, even though we're I, submitting it, but explaining how it fits in with the harbor management plan and our, our projects, and maybe you want to do two things. Maybe you want to revise, have Race revise that if necessary, and then comment. I, I can call Devin. Uh, I think you think it needs to be revision to make it clear what Look, pilings are getting replaced. It does need to be clear. It yeah. does need to be clear. And when I went with yeah. respect to the north pier, exactly. Exactly, and we did. We spent a lot of time talking about the scope of the work, and we spent a lot of time talking about we didn't have enough information to make a decision at this point about the northern pier. Over here. But we didn't. I don't know that we said that we weren't going to do anything with the northern no. pier at all ever. I no. think we were saying that we would wait to make a decision about what was going to happen on the northern pier. If we had pier. approval, then we could make yeah. a decision. So we, we wanted right. the option of being able to. That's Correct. my recollection. Correct. Correct. What, what pilings did you say it referenced? You said the southern pilings yes. are not going to be replaced? No, the southern pilings are to be are replaced. To be replaced. So, southern pilings are to be replaced. But it's the that, northern. That was it's the northern left. because we couldn't decide. We wanted to get in touch with people in the community. Right. We wanted to ask permission and then it was back off the approval. Right. And we, of a project. Right. But, right. But if we don't get the approval now, we, we, we're right. locked yeah. into it. I mean, it's a historic basis for it to have been included right. in the that's, north, but it's been a long time without that. Right. Well, that's that's where it is. The picture of just right. the northern. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So we'll we'll talk to Race about that. Yes. Okay. But there also is the, it's the sense of the commission though to write a letter to Dean to, to explain how this is important and relates to the Harbor Management Plan. Well, that's our function, yeah. right? I mean, our function is to to do that. So I I think that that would be appropriate. Uh, just let the let Deep know that as a commission that it is. We do believe it's consistent with the harbor management plan. Okay. Um, any any questions about that? About the COP that was filed? Anything else? Okay. Um, so lower wharf risk assessment, uh, Mr. Cargill and Mr. Sunman, moving moving you right up. I'm sorry. Can you guys? Hello? Yeah. Okay, Hello, sorry. I'm having trouble with the muting. Is Eric, you there? Yes. All right. Um, okay, thank you, uh, 
Madam Chairwoman, for allowing us to go first. Um, sure. I had, you know, issues at home. But <laughs> our, um, so we did meet with Peter Ritchie, who is the Assistant Risk Manager, excuse me, uh, Human Resource Manager for the Town of Fairfield, and he is the Acting Risk Manager for the town. And we met with the insurance broker for the town. Uh, I will not commit the name to the um, um for the record, because I can't remember, and I don't want to put the wrong name of the firm in. Um, it was a preliminary assessment where we walked the lower wolf property. We provided uh, Mr. Ritchie and uh, the representative for the uh, of the town's uh, insurance broker a sort of we gave him a tutorial and a background of uh, the history and the deed, et cetera, just for color. And some of the issues regarding uh, some of the property owners and you know the primary use of the, of, uh, the lower work. Um, a final report will not be uh, available for I think two or three weeks. We are hoping to get some sort of highlights um, uh, for tonight's meeting, but we have, did not receive those as a close of business today. Um, but for the record, I think that now that we have a linkage with the town and and um, HMC, uh, we've made great progress. And, you know, just being there and uh, assessing the damage from the storm, was it Christmas Eve or the 23rd of December, uh, it's quite remarkable. Uh, the, the Harbor Master made a, a comment about, you know, sand going certain places and um, looking at, you know, the wave action into the, the harbor. Um, we don't know where the sand went, but a lot of sand has left that beach that was deeded to uh, to the town. Um, we have a certain things that are stuck uh, uh, really uh, were, to me, fairly alarming, that there's an a open electrical box, and there appears to be an irrigation system that I've never seen running um, ever. Um, there's evidence of old fencing um, into the bulkhead um, probably dating back a hundred years. Um, there is obviously an opportunity for us to be working with the town in terms of having that final report and making recommendations um, to the town. Um, and I think that um, once that report is out, we will have a, a full report for our next meeting. I'm almost certain of it. Um, but um, Eric, do you wanna add anything at this point? Uh, no, you know, we were just, it was great to be down there to actually go through the whole property with a fine-tooth comb, especially after uh, the uh, that December 23rd event. Um, I was shocked to see that the sand was pretty much all gone, and it was, you know, basically to get to the beach uh, is pretty tricky, uh, walking along rocks. Um, it's kind of an unsafe situation, but we did see and notice... Um, you know, a lot of debris in the lawn uh, that um, was never there. Um, a lot of uh, uh, this irrigation system that, you know, it looked, I don't want to say it looked new, but it was, you know, recent. I, could, I, I couldn't believe that it was in there, in the ground, um, to to water the lawn. I wasn't aware that we were, that we, the town was doing, watering the lawn there, but if if, if that was part of the, the the property beforehand or if it it was installed later I, we didn't we had no idea but there were some safety issues that were obvious that are probably going to be easily corrected by the town once this report comes out uh regarding uh some outlet boxes that are missing some um safety covers and um and uh, there could be an outdated timer to a sprinkler system Things like that. Well, the, we will have a uh, definitive report from um, by next by next meeting uh, for sure in detail. But it was it was interesting and uh, to to walk the property and and um, um, try to understand what what things should should the town be doing to make it safer. But we're gonna we're waiting for them to to let us. Let us know exactly how they would how they would go about uh, making those uh, recommendations. I think, I think one of the issues. 
I think one of the, the main issues was we'd probably want to get in touch with the town if it already didn't happen already with uh, trying to, to um, make sure that that pier is is uh, fenced off um, completely so that there isn't any risk of any um, any activity out there on that pier right now. So I think that would be kind of a number one concern, but... Right, and you've heard the harbor master has asked the, already asked the town to to uh, yeah. board board that board up that entrance, and he's got uh, signs uh, in the making in the works that will say oh, those yeah. and keep. For, on. Forget, forgive me, I joined the call late. That's wonderful okay. news, and and yeah. I'm not surprised that he already did that. So thank you, yeah. thank you. And the uh, I have a yep. I have a to, question here. Oh, Don. May I ask a question, or is are you? Yeah, is there John, still go ahead. No, sure. Go ahead. Uh, very interesting report. Thank you. Uh, as as all of you know, uh, for better or for worse, that area is a very popular area for dog walkers, among others. Uh, would the idea of fencing uh, to increase safety uh, interfere with access by dog walkers to the beach? area I, I don't Don, go ahead oh no go ahead Sam I was just gonna uh, say with regard to the dog walkers and there's so many other stakeholders Don down there that would include you know um, especially historic um, what we can and cannot do that pier has a lot of historic um, significance to the town itself on the for the past couple of hundred years. As for putting fencing in, I think that there's so much more that needs to be done from that perspective. The dog walkers are a very strong constituency. Um, I consider myself um, a, a one of them. <laughs> uh, and I think there's going to be a lot of public comment um, and allowing for that after we get the full risk assessment report or engineering report from the town's broker, I think that they should come, Madam Chairman, and present to the commission and allow for public comment with any recommendations around fencing, et cetera, from a safety perspective. Um, but uh, the, you know, the evidence of the storm damage beyond the wharf was really amazing. Um, and that's not going to be the first time. There's going to be a number of nor'easters that we're going to face in the next few months as well. And it's going to change the composition of the of the beach area and the wharf, of course, again. But um, they, there's obviously going to be recommendations made, and we would allow the public to make comments as well. Does that answer your question, Don? Uh, sort of. I, I, just, I, I think we're on the same page. I just wanted to say uh, that, you know, that's a strong, as you put it, uh, outspoken group of people that have long enjoyed that property and the beach access Correct. for better or worse. I know there's controversy about it, but they, yep. uh, their opinions and their, uh, and their, and their activities there uh, need to always be remembered because they will remind you if we don't. I, I think the, I, yeah, I think the goal is is that you know we're going to try to make it as safe as possible down there and give the proper warnings that are necessary to um, use or pass at your own risk. Where it's where nature has removed sand um, uh, and exposed rocks now that are making it uh, hazardous to to walk if you're not steady on your feet. And uh, you know, I think that. I do not believe we're able to replace sand that's missing. So I think it's just a natural area where it'll heal itself uh, over time. But I think that, um, you know, as part of this re this report, we'll probably have recommendations of, of warning um, anyone who travel or who's walking on the property or in the grounds to, uh, to be aware of, um, you know, and be careful. Um, you know, walk at your own risk, et cetera, because it is, you know, I was kind of shocked to see how much sand was missing and to to, to actually get down to that beach, uh, it's not really a smooth walk anymore. So 
I think the uh, the goal of of this report will guide us as to how do we best you know uh, keep everybody um, safe as far as you know being alert and and also protecting the town from a liability standpoint, making sure they do their job as far as letting um, whoever's walking down there uh, just be aware of any hazards you know that that, yeah. that are there. That's basically it. If, Thank you. Jeff, if you'll notice in the COP that we applications we filed with DEEP, one of the one of the things that we've asked DEEP permission to do is to move a few of the displaced stones along that concrete wall, and that's about all we can do according to race. We cannot we cannot you know move them all out of the way. We can't. We, we we can repair the damage from the storm, but unfortunately, those stones are going to stay. I think, you know, during during Irene, um, the, the wind and wave action came from the south, and completely uh, lower wharf was underwater, and um, uh, that sand that whole sandbar over those rocks. Um, you know, were completely changed, and that was probably 10 or 12 years ago or so. And, um, you know, it, it will fill in again at some point, I'm sure. Um, yeah. But but as far as making stairs or a ramp, you know, I mean, that's, I have no idea, uh, you know, if any recommendations like that are possible or allowed or, you know, what. Um, but I think currently it's, you know, pass at your own risk. You know, you just decide, hey, do I want to be on these rocks or not with my dog? Right. Right. Am I physically fit to do so? But uh, currently, there's no warnings. So, but in that report, I'm sure we'll see things like that. And unfortunately, we have pictures of a father and two little girls clambering around on the seaweed-covered rocks underneath that pier at low tide. So, um, it, you know, we've got an awful, there are an awful lot of people who think that's really kind of fun. So, I think yeah. there's still be recommendations of signage with certain language, I think, for us to to, to uh, review, I, I expect, and, yeah. and, and to Good. cover town uh, from a liability standpoint and also to um, to warn people to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that doesn't exist now, and I think that we'll, we'll see these recommendations and we can decide what we want. I, I think just as a to close on that, I mean, what we needed to do was the triage on the risk assessment side. We needed to develop an awareness with the town of the issues. And then, as Don said, there are a number of stakeholders down there, dog walkers being one of them, but you have the property owners, the fishermen, you have the dog walkers and the boaters. And we have right now a communal detente. People seem to be getting along well. And um, after some, you know, flare ups on, um, some issues with regard to property owners down there. But um, I think once the report comes out and the recommendations are made, we need to be um, as uh, we need to do as much as we possibly can to um, get as much public comment uh, and probably recommend some of the people. I mean, we could talk to the dog walkers or some of these stakeholders and say, please, um, you know, make yourself available for public comment once the report is made. Okay, fine. Good. Sounds good. Brian? Brian, Harbor Master has a question. Two things I, yeah, I, forgot, I forgot to talk about. We also, I meant to mention the cold day of the year, the chairman, Mr. Stedman, and I went over to Kenzie Point for a little field trip on a uh, complaint that someone had dumped rocks all over the beach from the construction mm -hmm. of the uh, of the new uh, Sasco development. And it became obvious that what where there used to be a lot of sand coming from South Pine Creek Beach, walking to the west to Kenzie Point is not there anymore. Uh, and it was all washed away in that storm as well. And there's a lot of rocks, much like the lower wharfs. So there's a, a large amount of sand uh, that was washed away that we found as well. The other thing is for safety-wise, you know, I, I, during the season, the boating season, I go down to that area, the lower wharf, just about on a daily basis, uh, most of the time with my own yellow lab, who, the harbor master's uh, patrol dog, I call her, to, to look around. And I watch for things to try to get a feel last year, my first year, as to what was happening and what the safety issues were. And uh, very few issues. You know, there's a lot of folks that just sit there and watch the boats come in, sunset, or they just sit there in the afternoon uh, picnicking. Uh, 
most of the dogs are by and large very good. The dogs aren't bothering the people. The dogs really don't bother each other. Some people take them in the water, but the dogs in the water don't get in the way of the boat that I watch for. And every time I've gone, I haven't had to yell at anyone yet to get the dog away from the boat myself. Um, uh, the boats are very good coming in, and most of the time will slow down as appropriate with those markers <coughs> come in slow, give room to the sailboats. Uh, the, the only issues I've seen that I've had to deal with is obviously the kids going swimming, and I've had to warn them no more swimming off as they appear. And on the other side of the channel, chasing kids from the country club who like to come over the wall and explore at low tide, particularly the outlet pipe, and climb around in there, which I've had to chase them away several times, not letting them play in that area. I want to be meeting with the country club this spring about that to have them to remind their members to stay out of the harbor like that. They, they should not let the kids play there. Um, they need to be careful. It's very steep on the harbor side. You can have a non swimmer easily swim into the water. That's going to be quickly over their head. It's not like a beach. Current. Right. The current, the current yeah. Right. But, uh, but that's yeah, what I've been looking for to try to. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for Sam and Eric? Risk assessment? <laughs> Good progress. Good, good, good work, guys. Thank you very much. Oh, wait. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's been determined formally that the commission is responsible for that property. Is that? I guess. Uh, and I think that's because the, the it's, it's stated that all of the conditions in the pre in the deed for the previous deed for the lower wharf still apply. Apply to the and well. that, that deed specifies that the commission would be is responsible. Yeah. You talked about potentially in our new harbor management plan putting yeah. some language yeah. in there that clarifies that because that will get approved by the RTF yeah. or authority. Right. 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 Thank, thank you. Uh, any other questions about risk management? Okay, moving right along. Uh, lower Wharf, Mr. Stedman. Do we have anything else that we need to talk about? We've talked about the risk assessment, We've talked about this, the COP application and clarifying. I don't think that there's anything else. Oh, what, what about the, uh, what, was, was there an action recently taken to, to provide a, a cost share for, the, for a grant that would, replace, that would serve to replace this? Or we, we don't have the money now to do, to do the work. And just a note about the and artist select and then the RT. the first select woman reported in one of her emails that the I believe finance, finance. the finance board of finance and the board of selectmen had approved the engineering department's request for eight hundred thousand. The twenty percent twenty percent of the right, but. The, the twenty percent of the eight hundred thousand, right. which was our estimated cost for the repairs at the lower wharf. Correct. And our understanding would be that we can apply to the Connecticut Port Authority for a grant. But once once we, we have the once, COP. Once right. we have the COP and we have a, a cost share, or, or you know we, we can demonstrate that we. So this is the next fiscal year budget. So this is one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, right. probably is what they right. mean. And the RTM is going to uh, the RTM committee group is going to discuss it this evening. Um, the town engineer will be there, and I will be there as well. Um, well but that's, that's, that's not good progress too. Right? right, that's really good progress. But that's not a and the full RTM presumably will vote on it next next Monday on the 27th. So tonight is just the committee, um, and so moving right along. I think that that would complete our report for the lower wharf. I think. Right. Right, Mr. Russo, you are here about the lower wharf. About 11:43. Uh, 11:43. Sorry. Yep. Uh, yeah. Just regarding what was was brought up before, um, we received and you know I had it over here. I was looking at the dates. Um, we had received a draft. I think it was on the 20th. Um, sorry, I'm looking you up. Um, but it said that there was no motorized vessels that would be permitted for the dock. Mm -hmm. And then when we received the revised language that was in the eventual approval, um, it had added in um, no sailing vessels. Well, was the Coast Guard the Coast Guard 
language, how right. the Coast Guard defines motorized vehicle, motorized vessels. Right, and well, and the way it read, you know, when, so we had a conversation, we reached out to Colin after we had received it, and, and we had a, um, uh, a conversation about the wording, and we said, well, you know, why no sailing vessels? And, you know, I, you know, it'd be one thing if it was like a keeled vessel. I mean, you know, you'd, you'd be pretty insane to try to put a keeled vessel over there at that dock anyway. But if you had something like a Sunfish or a 420 or something like that, uh, with a retractable daggerboard or something like that, why couldn't that type of vessel be permitted uh, at the dock? It just seemed overly uh, restricted. Um, and... So he had indicated that that was the language, I guess, that had come from the Coast Guard. And so we talked to him about a modification. Um, and while we were discussing that, we also mentioned to him about the restriction, the blanket restriction on motorized vessels. And if, if that could be modified to permit motorized vessels from mid-tide to mid-tide um, without uh, any overnight uh, stocking because that would most likely go beyond the tide to the tide, you know, restriction. Um, so ab about that level of restriction because, you know, in this area, you're allowed to drive a motorboat in, in this area and you're allowed to anchor in this area. And so to us, it seemed if you were to go Basically, you could go up to this dock, you could anchor next to this dock, but you couldn't tie up next to the tie to this dock. And so the restriction just seemed to be more severe than the restrictions that would be to any other boater that would be in the area. And that a mid-tide to mid-tide restriction would achieve the goal of not having a permanent berth uh, at the dock. Um, but would allow somebody in that time frame to just go up to the dock. So those were the two two things that we had talked to Colin uh, at Deep about and about a modification uh, to that language. And and so that that that's what we were we were seeking um, with regard to that. So what did you got? Well, so Devin reached out to to Brian. And, and let him know that that was kind of our, our thinking with regards to the language. And so what Colin uh, at Deep had requested of us was to submit uh, modified language that would, that, would, uh, that would amend that condition and that they would look at it. That's it. We haven't, we haven't sent him that modified language. So the first step would be that, we, we would, that he contacted Brian and that, that we would share that with you. Okay. I have okay. a question or just general education. When, when you request a, modif a modification of a permit condition, does DEEP have a process to do that? It's different than just submitting a whole new application? So they're actually looking at that, about when, what the process would be to modify. All right. If they would, um, if they would require us to file an entirely new application, or if they would just open it up and let the parties who had previously commented on it, so you folks and also um, Shellfish, to review this modified language. Before they, but yeah, they, they are actually looking at to see what process they would take to support that. We have to make a call because you know other other permits for yeah. other purposes that might have more might have conditions that are you know. Not arguable, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what their process. Well, yeah, and I mean, because part of it too, you know, kind of separate from the mid-tide to mid-tide issue. But the the one we had sent, I believe, it was on January twentieth, said no motorized vessels, and then February sixth, I believe, when the new approval came in and it said no sailing vessels as well. But I believe it said no auxiliary, no sailing, sailing, sailing vessels with, sailing. with, with, yeah, with auxiliary. Yeah, it, it says, it says but, uh, all but in any event, I mean, we would really need to see what yeah. your language and what... what we have to get them from D. Right. From right. D so, before we're in a position to come. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I know that there was a lot of concern from the Shellfish Commission about the impact of 
of uh, of of having any, any kind of motor sitting there at the dock for any period of time. Um, and I think that we supported that pretty strongly. So um, I think the concern too was having keeled vessels come in and destroying the bottom, damaging the the, the the habitat. Yeah, we, which habitat. is one of the reasons we asked Colin. We, we asked him what was the what was the reasoning behind the language? Because if it was something like you didn't want to keel disturbing the ground, then maybe what we could propose is just saying um, permitting non keeled sail vessels. Well, and I the think problem, would... the problem we have with that is, is as you know, a, a, not, a, a sailboat with a keel up doesn't go where you want it. It typically just goes sideways, you know. Because with only keel, they'll offer that. That's what makes the sailboat go forward. Right. The keel and the Yeah, yeah but generally, like, I mean, if you're on a 420, you could drop a dagger board halfway down and give yourself some to get on, at least to get on a dock. Yeah. Um, I used to sail 420s out of Peabody. So, yeah. um, you know, I... I it's just we got the February 6th one. This is this is what it says: just birthing restriction, and no time shall any motorized vessel, sail vessel, or auxiliary powered sailing vessel be birthed at, moored at, or otherwise secured to the float authorized period. And so when we saw the sail vessel, um, we just thought that was um, overly restrictive, given. Um, and maybe the, the, the way to change that language would be something like that. You could allow a sunfish or some type of um, sailboat like that to at least get it and dock there. I think part of our thinking was that this is consistent with the harbor management plan's restriction that in the outer harbor there are no moorings permitted because of the open waters and danger to any vessel secured out in the open water. So we don't allow any of the town's moorings to be placed in the same area that you're talking about putting a, a small so that's another concern that we had added. About right. That. Mm -hmm. Right. So but when whenever you get whenever you submit that to deep, if you'll let us know, I mean we'd be happy to comment on it. So and just so just so you know what what it would probably sound like in is birthing restriction at no time shall um well it would say well, I'll get the wording, but basically what it would say is that non-keeled sail vessels would not be permitted and that motorized vessels um, would be permitted mid-tide to mid-tide without um, any overnight, uh, without overnight. Well, I'm not sure that that would satisfy the Shellfish Commission because overnight is could be all sorts of tides, and overnight's hard. In the summertime, there's not a lot of overnight. In the wintertime, there's a whole lot more over. I mean, they were very concerned about the gas um, and any kind of leakage from getting into the shellfish beds. Um, you know, those those volunteers um, relay thousands and thousands of oyster baby oysters from Ash mm -hmm. Creek over there. Um, there's a ton of uh, acreage that's led, led to commercial oystermen out there. Um, I know the Shellfish Commission was very concerned, and as I say, we supported that concern. So I think we'd really need to see your language and then comment on it as, a, as officially as a commission. But right now, I think this is just kind of a it, hypothetical it, yeah, conversation. Is, this property is, you know, it's unfortunate. There is no frontage on this property that's not in the shellfish bed area. And I think we're the only property that has frontage on the shellfish bed area. So we don't have an opportunity. It would be great if we had a spot here on this mass property that we could have located the dock out of the shellfish bed. But that, that just wasn't available. To right. Us. So and so what, we're, what we were looking at is some type of restriction that was in line with what might be permitted in that area, which is that you can drive over that area um, during certain tides. Um, you know, mid tide to mid tide would be open for that. Uh, you know, for a regular motor to go in that area, and that they would also be permitted to anchor in that. Area. Right, but you know, the devil is in the details. In mid tide, does that mean two hours? Is two and a half hours? Is that three hours? Three, 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 I, I, I understand, but but still, that's hypothetical, and it's not a, actually. You know, we've had the conversation, and I think what we really, in order to proceed, we really need to see sure. what your what your proposal, what you're proposing, and what Deep's procedure is. For moving moving forward with it, but as, as, yeah. But as we stand right now, I mean, at our last meeting, we were very very um, confident with the recommendations that we made to Deep. So that that's really sort of our official permission. Yeah, Dave. Sorry, this might be naive. But are there any other mid tide to mid tide allowances or provisions that have been okay? Yeah. 
I think it would be very important to see the process that DEEP intends to follow to, to amend the permit condition. That goes beyond just your your uh, mm -hmm. application, but but certainly when when we see what's presented, we can put it on the agenda. And Are there any other docks in the outer harbor? No. 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 If there's no, no other, we haven't ever been presented with somebody trying to put a dock out in that water. Got it. Well, I mean, that, that property is, I mean, essentially, <laughs> essentially it. I mean, on the Westport side, there's stock yeah. coming out. You know, there's plenty. Right, but not, um, no. Yeah. Well, but, but, but there was there one. No, no, one Fairfield on, 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 on Peak Lake Avenue, there's all these properties on the water, but they don't have docks. You, oh, you mean on the on, on the other there's side there, of Fairfield? Yeah. There's been also within a harbor management area. So, so we'll look forward to seeing that. Okay, Absolutely. great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sand management? Yes? Um, I guess the main topic is the status of the Corps of Engineers work. And um, although in that email it talked about the topic with the, uh, the sand, I think we've, we've all reached agreement, including the Corps, that, that the sand will be placed offshore. And, and aquaculture director wrote an email to, to the Corps uh, expressing support for that and how by placing the sand offshore, that would be a, um, one of the first, if not the first, project to implement the state's new shellfish restoration plan, which is a statewide plan. The idea is to build up the, the bottom area um, use it as a pilot project, plant oysters on it, make a firmer bottom, and, and relate that to the selfish plant. The issues or questions that seem to be concerned uh, in that response has to do with getting deep to agree to that, <laughs> because right. because deep's position had been that the sand needs to be placed on the on a beach for beneficial purposes. We're arguing that this. Shellfish enhancement is a beneficial purpose. So that, and then they also mentioned in the in the email that they need to to address uh, real estate uh, mm -hmm. questions, and that has to do with access through the Country Club of Fairfield, and also a a statement or assertion as to who is the owner of of the, that sand spit that would be would be dredged. So, just your. This is the area that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. and we're, not, we're, not, we're not pursuing a plan to dredge out here now because that would re require a different method and a different type of disposal, and the material is not suitable. It's not sandy material like that for, for placement on that. So that, that, that's the area that we're pursuing the, the, the dredging projects. I did a little homework and saw that this is not a new problem. <laughs> no, right, exactly. <laughs> the early 1800s. That's interesting because when I was tagging along with these guys uh, on Saturday, we remarked that we're essentially doing the same thing that people did here 200 years ago, yeah. except they didn't have the electronic, the electronic depth finder. We still, they did have a. We had both. Uh, we had right. both. We still did it old school. <laughs> But that line, as you can see in the photograph here, that's now covered with sand. There's a straight line of wall there that's right. completely what, overrun by sand. You know, this yeah. the the uh, jetty mm -hmm. connects right there. Yeah, right. That's how much sand. And that's the trouble. This none of the sand here. If you draw it, it should be like this. That channel. Right. That's all. That belongs. No, that belongs there. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. so we we talked about having a. a committee meeting with representatives from the Country Club of Fairfield uh, to alert them that this project is moving forward. Um, so it does seem to be moving along. However, slowly it feels like it's moving along. It does seem like it's moving along. And, and our one, uh, I guess, look at this is that they have the money, they were, they were allocated the money to do this. So that the federal government agency has to make progress uh, to demonstrate that they're doing the job. Okay, any questions for Jeff, sand management, dredging? Okay, Mooring Committee, Mr. Herschler. The Mooring Committee met on February 14th, um, and the Harbor Master has covered the topics that we talked about, save for a discussion that we had just 
confirming the process for the interviewing of candidates for the deputy harbor master open position. I think that that was useful to make sure that all of us involved in that are on the same page with all the steps that need to be taken in the interviewing process. There are some nine or maybe ten total candidates, I think. Yeah, there's one. Well, there's nine. nine. Well, there are ten. There's ten now. Yeah, ten now. Yeah. Ten? So the, the discussion was about the three members of that subcommittee meeting together with each of those candidates to interview them and asking the same questions of all of them. Right. Same time, same, everybody would get to this. Right. Right. Any questions? Thank you, Jack. Uh, any questions on the morning committee? Okay. Uh, Bill, any deputy harbor master search? I think <coughs> any chance he, Bill, any chance you got to call in? I guess not. Um, Cohen v. Deep. Mr. Stedman, an update, please. All right. Well, this, like, like you said, uh, in this, in this, like quickly, and uh, for Dave's um, education, I guess there was a court case in the last two years, um, and and the uh, both the, the Superior Court judge ruled two concerning things: one, that a Harbor Commission doesn't have authority to review applications for state permits. And the second one, uh, second matter of concern was that for a commission's recommendation to be given standing by two, it has to be a recommendation that was spelled out ahead of time in the harbor management plan. It's not a recommendation that the commission <laughs> comes up with after thoughtful discussion of the, of the particulars of a. So that was that that judicial process um, exhausted itself up to the Supreme Court denying the. Review of the of the appellate court. So then, then an effort has been made to amend the harbor management statute, the, the the state law that authorizes harbor management commissions, not to create anything substantially different, but just to reflect what the practice has always been. That that the, the important responsibility of the commission is to review state applications, and that a recommendation of the commission has to be given weight if it's thoughtful and based on on the plan. So back in December, a um, legislator from Eastern Connecticut, uh, Representative Nolan or Nathan, Nathan or Nolan, Nolan, Nolan um, introduced what was called a, a, a placeholder bill with just a purpose and, and, the, and the title being an act concerning the revision of the Harbor Management Act. And then that had to go with the purpose to the Environment Committee. And then the Environment Committee, we, we, we the Fairfield and also the group of Harbor Management Commissions, submitted a proposed draft of some legislation to clarify the, the bill. And we were concerned that we hadn't had a chance to talk with anybody. We just submitted it to the different commissions. And surprisingly, the Environment Committee took our proposal <laughs> and put it into the draft bill. And so it, it states, well, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the commission, and all commissions, may review and make recommendations consistent with the plan on any application for a permit or license to be issued by the state. So that makes clear that you have authority to do that. Then it says that the department, meaning the DEEP, or other state agency authorized to act on any submitted application or registration shall consider the recommendations of the commission made pursuant to the plan. Any recommendation of the commission that is consistent with and adequately supported by the content of the plan with respect to any such application or regulation shall be binding on the department or other state agency when making regulatory decisions unless the commission unless the agency shows cause otherwise and that was that was in there before so that in effect addresses what we had asked now a public hearing has been scheduled for this bill which is a week well it's next week, it's next monday um, so the, we have to figure out how best to, to submit testimony, uh, and we were told by the chair of the Environment Committee that the testimony can be in person at the Legislative Office Building in Hartford, or you can be, you know, have a time to talk about it on the, the Zoom call or whatever it's called, and there can also be written testimony. And the written testimony, there's no end date for it right now until when the action is. So, so we have to now prepare what, how to respond and, 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 and make clear why this is important. And, I, and, and so all of the Harbor Commissions in Connecticut are being contacted and asked to submit uh, supportive comments. And I, it's very interesting that, that, that the Environment Committee did take 
the, the recommendations that we, we put together. Uh, so that, that's that's my sort of positive report on this. Um, it sounds like logically it would make more sense if they listened to our recommendations from Hartford, being that we live here on the coastline and we're the ones. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It, so that, that's it where does we make sense. That's the logic, yes. And I can see why the uh, you know actions to, that have been taken have. So. Mm -hmm. So now we have to prepare for next. We'll, we'll prepare some testimony and, and uh, maybe contact the legislators and see if, if any of them wish to sign on as a co-sponsor of the bill. I know other other towns were talking about that. Um, I don't know the process for doing that. Um, but anyway, so we spent a lot of time on this, and maybe it will work out properly. So you and I should get together and. Mm -hmm. Compose something that gets yes. submitted. Yes. From the first select woman. Well, that's another thing. If we should ask the first select woman to also submit some support. In any of these affected towns, it seems like it might have yes. more yes. impact if it's from the chief executive right. of the town right. saying that's that. That's a great idea. Let's, let's, you know, in the next couple of days, we can craft. You it. and I talked about should yes. we just write a draft that people yes. can just accept? Right. 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 Write a draft and we can submit it to them and see who signs. Right. And see who signs. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's a good idea. And I I, um, I can't imagine that they that our Hartford group would uh, would not be very happy to have something that they just have to sign as opposed to actually And, and we use this example all the time, but but the a good example of the importance of this had to do with the Exide remediation. Uh -huh. because management plan didn't talk about how the exercise remediation should be undertaken. <laughs> but when the remediation was proposed, it affected the harbor. And the, plan, and the plan has recommendations and policies concerning protecting water quality and fish and wildlife and shorefront neighborhoods and so forth. And we used the plan to argue that Exide just couldn't do whatever it wanted to do. It had to be, it had to be reviewed locally. But if you, if you may use the argument that the Superior Court judge made and, and the uh, appellate court upheld, the commission, the commission would have no standing in this because the plan doesn't specify how the exide remediation was to be un, would be undertaken. <laughs> Quite interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, again, I, I see the logic, and it seems like it, uh, it should be within our jurisdiction to amend that plan and then act appropriately mm -hmm. yeah, uh, going forward. So. And deep can still do whatever it wants to do, but they just have to explain themselves. And that was the, that you can't eliminate the state's authority. Right. But you, but you can certainly logically require them to have to consider the commission's recommendations. Sure. Jack, you were going to? No, I, there's a lot of history here of even deep acknowledging the authority of the commissions historically. And it was only in a recent case where that got turned upside down upsetting law years and years of precedent where deep acknowledged that they needed to follow the directions that were consistent with our and, uh, it was kind of a shock for us to see that it was essentially uh, taking the teeth out of the power of yeah. the commis local sure. commissions to have influence over anything that was presented to you. Well, what's interesting is that whenever anybody, anybody files an application, to do anything on the shoreline, they have to check a box that says, I've notified the Harbor Management Commission. So right. if they have, if, and, and this is the deep form. It's not something that right. we say to them. Right. It comes from deep. So it just, it, the whole thing, it just doesn't make any and sense. And I think Jeff has pointed out they've approved plans in the, back, in the past that have specifically said that exactly. they needed to follow right. the commission. Gotcha. Not ours, but others. Right. So right. that's good news. And I think if you get this legislation passed, then we can complete the revision of the Harbor Management Plan Correct. and make the implementation section consistent with the language in the statutes, and there's no question about it. Right. So I think I don't have any expertise with this, but this does seem like it's moving very quickly, right? I mean, this yeah. got submitted right. weeks ago, and it's already right. being well, in a public again, hearing. It, it, we have to thank uh, Mayor Passero from New London because he was aware that, that there was a deadline for submitting these placeholder bills. Right. And he learned about it like the two days before the deadline, and then we were able to submit that placeholder bill. So. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, new business. Um, we have a request from, um, from several groups, and specifically from Jill uh, 
Segura of District 7 that we consider, the Harbor Commission consider expanding its jurisdiction to include Ash Creek. Um, and uh, Jill is not able to be here this evening and ask that we table the discussion so she could participate. So we can discuss it preliminarily, we can table it, we can, we can really kind of do whatever we want, but I think at the end of the day we would want her to be back, to be with us uh, and participate in March. So, um, and uh, uh, the Harbor Master and I have both gotten uh, a significant number of emails and inquiries from the members of the Ash Creek Association um, asking if we would please, uh, if we were interested in uh, assuming some kind of jurisdiction or collaborating with the folks in, in, in Ash Creek for, um, for some oversight and protection. Um, there's been a lot of things, uh, I've heard anecdotes about people pulling up uh, to Ash Creek um, in the middle of the night, digging oysters, building a bonfire on the side of the, of the creek there, um, and having a good time, um, that the dredging of South Benson Marina is causing the Big Island to disappear because the water flow is so much stronger, um, a whole lot of, I guess, other things going on there uh, that are caused folks who take an interest in the, the health uh, of Ash Creek to worry that um, habitat is being destroyed uh, and the creek is uh, in, in danger. Um, one of the reasons why I think our name came up um, because it's well outside, the Ash Creek is well outside our jurisdiction, but one of the reasons why it came up uh, in connection with Ash Creek is, as I mentioned, if anyone filing a, a, a request to do work um, in Ash Creek, that f filing a request with DEEP for a permit to do work in Ash Creek has to indicate that they've let us know. And we, there was a, um, a dock that was built in Ash Creek, 50 Bay Edge Court, uh, well outside our jurisdiction. We did, in fact, get notice, um, as did a number of other town agencies, uh, and the dock got built, and people were concerned that, it, I guess, I have never seen the dock, but that it's a big dock and that it shouldn't, it, some people believe it shouldn't be there. So, but I believe that because we routinely get notice of any permit activity over there, that the groups who are concerned and pay attention to Ash Creek think that we could um, keep them informed of what's going on over there. Uh, I did point out to Jill that um, uh, DEEP has a process called a 1440 DOC, and if you submit plans stamped with an engineer's stamp, that there's no comment. It, you, you build it. You're, you're, you're pretty much effectively good to go. Um, so she's aware of that. Um, but she would like to talk to us about expanding our jurisdiction, and she'd like us to consider expanding our jurisdiction. So, Jack? Just as a matter of implementation, the jurisdiction of the commission is determined in, by the RTM in the, in the uh, town code, Chapter 24-7, and it's not up to the Harbor Management Commission. It's actually up to the RTM to amend the town code if they were going to change that. So it's not really, we don't determine our own jurisdiction, it's actually de determined by the right. RTM. Right. And, and again, logically, if, if the jurisdiction was to be expanded to include Ash Creek, it would have to include Pine Creek too. Um, or the whole town. Or the whole town. I mean, that's, that's, so, but, but she's, she's asking specifically Ash Creek right. with no Fairfield Beach right. and no South Bend. I mean, she can talk to us about this, but right. they, actually what she's talking about is her own, right. her own RTM right. makes a determination about changing Chapter 24-7 and changing the words that are in that chapter to include a that, different definition of the jurisdiction. Then we have to amend the Harbor Management Plan we would to include right. provisions no for question. Ash Creek. No right. question. So can I ask a point of clarification slash a dumb question? Um, no dumb question. Are there, is there another oversight or a commissioner body within the town that oversees the well, rest the of the Conservation Commission? The okay. shellfish, shellfish Commission is very active over there. I mean, that's, right. the, that's the shellfish nursery. Of, mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know that they, either of those bodies, 
would have any more opportunity, if you will, to be there than we would. I mean, the beauty of the, 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 the Harbor Commission, most of the members are sailors, boaters, kayakers, walkers yeah. down at the lower wharf. So there's eyes as well as reports. The Ash Creek, I'm not so sure that we we have that kind of um, obser ob observation powers, observation opportunities. I don't know. This also relates to the topic we just talked about. It depends what happens with this legislation proposal. If it if it's implemented, we have more control over permits that go before D sure. to at least have a, a view that they must take into consideration. If it's consistent with our updated plan. Right, and even then the RTM would need to amend that section to That's the start of it. I mean right, it's, right. it's entirely there for if it's not right. she can come talk to us, but right. it's really it's the RTM's job to do right. that. Right. 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 Well I think she wants our cooperation. I mean she wants us to wants to to hear if we have concerns or reasons why not or I mean the history we talked about this some years ago where right. there were a different requests to expand right. our jurisdiction right. and with all the discussion we've had about the years and years of battling to to get through the process of being able to do two different kinds of dredging projects um, and all the other issues we were facing, we just didn't feel like we had the bandwidth to take on anything else. Yeah, and I, I would say that I think it's, we're a small group and we're very busy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can share that I've and, and to say nothing of the fact that it's a creek, not a harbor. It's only navigable except in a kayak, you know, at very high tide. Right. Uh, it's 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 not a harbor. Right. <laughs> right. But, right, but there are other harbor mansions. There are also are. many other harbor mansion plans where the, where the mo most of them where the commission has the jurisdiction over the t over the entire the entire town, town waterfront mm -hmm. right because right. so, it's not just a boating plan it's a right. plan to protect coastal resources right. or other, other types of access right and there there are harbor management plans in communities that are on rivers so it's not right it's yeah. not. well we sure so, the other thing I would offer is I've, I have worked with the Ashby Conservancy Association in my, uh, through my school. We've got uh, some students collaborating with them, and um, I've gotten nothing but good vibes. Their, their intention is pure. Um, you know, sure. They're certainly there sure. uh, for the right sure. reasons. So I would, sure. I would be interested to hear sort of more of you know, what they want, but then also kind of let them know um, that it is more of an RTM request to ultimately change our jurisdiction right. to then potentially you know, have right. their request included. Well, you know, unfortunately, we... There's, there's no way that if we knew that there was somebody down there building a bonfire and digging up oysters illegally, there's nothing we could do about oh, it except call the police, right. which yeah. they can do too. Right. So, and they're they're probably more likely to see that than we are. Right. Um, so, but uh, all, all of that said, um, she she will would like to come and participate. So the harbor master's jurisdiction, by the way, is different than ours. He <laughs> was very active in, in Ash Creek. And so it was 27 years ago and we prepared what was called a multiple use management plan for coastal open space with recommendations and policies for the Ash Creek estuary. And it was a document that was adopted by the Conservation Commission and then at the same time, not that the volume of a report indicates how good it is, but a lot of time was spent with identifying issues having to do with the Ash Creek environment. And all this previous work would, would fit into management policies now right. for the creek if you could find the right entity to, right. to sort of oversee everything. Right. And commissioners, part of those part of those reports that Jeff referred to are the are embedded in the agenda underneath the uh, the new business uh, item. So you mm -hmm. can see you can see executive summaries, if you will, of, of some of that work. So, um, but I think it's a good it's a good discussion to good have. Good conversation but, to but have. There Absolutely. may be another entity that would be better suited to, to deal with this, including maybe something with a special act of the legislature that legislature that created a joint Fairfield Bridgeport committee that would have some sort of role in shared some right. line, right? Right, right. Yeah. right. Since the half of it is on Bridgeport <laughs> or thereabouts, yeah. So, any comments? Any other comments, Don? Hey, Madam Chairman, it's Brian. Yep. Um, at the Harbor Master jurisdiction, as I indicated to the folks that called, I have certain statutory authority, and a lot of that has to do with stationing of vessels, positioning of vessels uh, in harbors. 
ensuring that the harbor management plan is followed regarding the vessels, dealing with derelict vessels, and then law enforcement, but basically for certain boating regulations. Not really, you know, I, I don't have jurisdiction on the land right. uh, that I can go and stop people from having clam baked or even people that are pulling clams out of the pump flat. You know, that, that's not, a, you know, a, a, a navigation violation. And I can encourage them to talk to uh, you know, the conservation, which they did, as well as the Deep Environmental Conservation Police Unit which does have you know, more jurisdiction over those types of things. But how, um, many, how many deep environmental policemen, if you will, are there along the coast? That's right. That's the issue. You know, in in, 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 in town police, there's limited resources the state has uh, of not only vessels, but just officers who are in the parks, to the rivers, to everywhere, trying to force things. And, and to call them in takes time to get them there. Know, made, and I suggest that they also talk with the Bridgeport PD as well, because you know, half of that is Bridgeport, and then the island in the middle, is my understanding, half is uh, privately held and half is municipal, so that gets complicated as well, those pro property rights. Right. On it. right. I think that <clears throat> the island in the middle is actually uh, an Aspatuck Land Trust property. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I was told. It's part Aspatuck. Part municipal owned. I don't know if that's true, but that's, that's the information someone related to me. Well, obviously, this is not something that we can solve in one evening. Um, hopefully, this conversation gets folks thinking about it, thinking about some of the 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 the, the benefits and the uh, the adversities to getting involved over there. And uh, we can look forward to having Jill join us at the next meeting. Uh, maybe she knows something that we don't know. Um, and uh, we can have a good conversation then. So, um, any any anything that anybody wants to add to that? Okay. Uh, comment from the public. No, thank you. Have a good night. You too, Pat. <laughs> Could I bring up another item? Or sure. We, we received a certificate of permission application submitted by the town to DEEP for uh, replacement of the Perry Green bulkhead. And we haven't had a chance to comment on that, so I think we should put that on the agenda for next month and let the deep, let DEEP know that we intend to provide comments after the next commission meeting. Great. I was not aware of that. But we can put that on the agenda, the Perry Green uh, bulkhead have we, have project. Have you seen it? It was emailed, and I didn't realize it was as what was emailed was the application submitted to DEEP. But I checked with Mr. Hurley before uh, okay. the meeting. And he said yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll yes. Thank you, Jeff. We will we will put that on the agenda for our March 21st meeting. Um, since there's no more public comment and no other questions, can I have a motion to adjourn? Jack moves. Don, I Sam. Second. I second it. Don, was that you? I'm I'm saying yes, it was. I thank you. I would second. Thank, I would second. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank, thank you, everyone. See you. Talk to you on uh, March 21st.